Hello uh, and welcome this morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us uh, for the second of our Leaner and Greener webinars. Um, I'm Patricia Kingston, Corporate Events Officer at Tourism NI, and it's my pleasure uh, to welcome everyone along today. This webinar is being delivered as part of uh, Tourism NI's ongoing Tourism Enterprise Development Programme and follows from our Leaner and Greener uh, Cost Saving Masterclass last year. So, as I mentioned, this is the second of our three Leaner and Greener webinar sessions. Um, I know some of you here today also joined us for our water conservation webinar back in January. Uh, and today we're going to be focusing on waste management. Uh, we're delighted to be joined once again by Tina O'Dwyer from the Tourism Space, who's going to be leading the session. And we'll also be hearing from hospitality consultant Anya Martin, who will be sharing some more of her experiences working with Ireland's first carbon neutral hotel, Hotel Dolan. If you have any questions at all for our speakers today, uh, please be sure to pop those into the chat box in your control panel at any time during the session. And I'm going to pick up as many of these as I possibly can at the end. So now, without further ado, we have a jam-packed morning. So um, it's my great pleasure to introduce Tina O'Dwyer. Uh, morning, Tina, and uh, great to have you with us again. Over to you. Good morning, Patricia. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody who's joined the webinar this morning. It's great to be here for the second workshop. Um, some of you were with us for water last time. I think you see some similarities. The leaner and greener approach is uh, kind of consistent across energy, waste and water. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll just get started and make, make the most of our time. Um, so what we're going to cover today, why waste management is important for your business. Number one, you probably have a good sense of that, but we'll go through it to set the context. And then a 10 step approach to establish four important things. How much waste is generated in your business? where waste is generated in your business, what actions you can take to reduce waste and save money, and how you can develop an action plan to reduce waste and save money. So I think one of the important things here is you'll see in the approach is we don't start at the, at, at here's the actions you take to reduce waste. We do start at really getting a handle on key figures and key numbers about waste within your business. Um, and as we talk through the presentation, we'll explain why that is important. I would, the 10 step approach to managing waste, this is the overview. Now I know that's a busy slide. We will be going through this step by step. You will see um, similarities, certainly if you've been on the water or the, at the energy masterclass, uh, similarities in the approach. You'll see the first four there, first four steps are about getting your data together in relation to waste. That's one to four. Five, six, seven, eight, that's things you do specifically in relation to waste um, to, to get to understand waste generation and waste, waste reduction in your business. And then finally, nine and 10, moving towards the action plan. So steps one to four and steps nine and 10 are similar for energy and for water as well. So as well, I bring draw your attention to the workshop resources that support this webinar. You'll find them on tourismni.com forward slash leaner greener. There is a guide to waste management that complements this training and also a set of worksheets on Excel that I'll refer to during this training that will help you on your waste management journey. So we'll get straight into why is this important for your business? There's a number of key reasons for that. The first is it will reduce cost and save you money. Um, and I think in, in these times, we all know how extremely important that is. Here's a graphic that I have taken from a document by investni.com that shows it's a really important document, the visible art graphic, the visible costs of waste versus the hidden costs of waste. And you can start to think that, you know, your waste costs are what you pay in your waste disposal collection, your waste bill that comes every month. That's actually only about four to five percent of the total cost of waste. Underneath what we don't see, I will say underneath the surface as such are all these hidden costs that have gone into creating that waste in the first place. So energy use, utility use, people handling materials or food, transportation, storage, time, effort, lost profit, production capacity. There's a whole lot of things, depending on your business, that, um, that, lead, that, that add to the cost of waste. So sometimes if food is a good example, we think it's the cost of disposing of the food. It's actually the, the cost of producing that food, and the, the, the cost of buying that food in, storing it, processing it, serving it, cleaning up after it. All of that are hidden costs behind, behind waste. So it's important from a cost point of view. It's more than just your bill. It reduces greenhouse gas emissions. This is the second big reason, or for many, the first big reason. We know how important this is right now. Material consumption has trebled since 1970 worldwide to about 100 billion tonnes. Now, what does a billion mean? It's kind of hard for us to fathom. The important thing there is that it has trebled and it looks forecast to continue to grow at an exponential rate. 
the extraction of resources to produce goods leads to global habitat loss, deforestation, greenhouse gas emissions, biodiversity loss, um, and water stress. And waste in landfill conti continues to cause carbon emissions and also generates air, soil, water, noise, and odor pollution. There's very little good to be said about waste in terms of the environment, and it's an absolute priority to, to start addressing this to reduce um, emissions. The goal is to minimize the amount of waste your business sends to landfill through implementing prevention, reduction, and recycling strategies. And we will be speaking about some of those today. Another good reason is legal requirements. So governments all over the world are really focused now on climate action and embedding climate action in all strands of public po policy. We've seen how much that has accelerated in the last few years. Northern Ireland itself is set to target is to set a target this year to ensure that no more than 10% of its waste goes to landfill by 2035. So there's a new waste management strategy and a circular economy strategy for Northern Ireland in the making right now due to consultation due to close in March 2023. So it's very live and current right now for you in Northern Ireland. The next big reason is it may boost your business brand and reputation. And the other reason is that your clients, customers and staff expect it. Um, certainly we've seen a sea change in awareness um, around this. And there's very little tolerance now for waste, particularly for visible waste, but also customers, clients, trade partners are interested in what you're doing behind the scenes on waste as well. So some really compelling reasons there as to why it's important. So let's get into, I suppose, uh, the, the, the nuts and bolts of when we're talking about waste and managing waste. Two important terms come up quite a lot, the circular economy and the waste hierarchy. And this, again, is really for context um, before you start drilling down into waste in your own business. So thinking about the circular economy, more or less, and it's a, it's a simplistic representation here, but we have... The, the capitalist growth model is a linear economy growth model, um, just described here in this fairly simple graph. We extract resources, we produce goods and services, we distribute them, we consume them, and we dispose of any waste afterwards. Um, and that's kind of what has led to this enormous pressure on, on land, landfills. We've gotten very good at producing lots and lots of products and consuming them really um, with convenience top of mind for us, the more the, more the years have gone on since about the 1950s. And this is, I suppose, what, what everybody's realizing can't really continue. This is what's putting pressures on the, on the resources of the planet and really causing the impacts we're seeing in climate action. It's one of, the, one of the major reasons. The circular economy, by contrast, looks at things differently. So production, feeding into distribution, into consumption, but then looking at ways to reduce, repair, recycle, reuse the material that's already in use, and then sending that back through to production again. So this challenges us all in society to think about, or particularly designers and engineers, that they're designing in from the outset the ability to re reuse or repair or recycle the materials that are coming into us in our new goods. So this is trying to keep the loop closed. We don't need to create any more stuff if we can keep that um, circular loop going and certainly design that from the outset in future. That's what's meant by the circular economy. Um, it's a system which is designed to reuse, repair, and recycle as many products as possible. It's a term becoming part of everyday language to describe a new production and consumption model that ensures continuous growth over time. So it's equally not about uh, particularly killing off growth in the way the capitalist model has been built, but certainly about being more mindful uh, throughout every stage of the process of sending as little as possible to landfill waste. Okay, so this is another term from the waste hierarchy. This comes uh, from a policy document in the North as well. It particularly describes our waste responsibilities. So the waste hierarchy, if you look at it from the top, the wider thing there is what we are most encouraged to do, right down to the narrowest, which is what we are least encouraged to do. So the very first thing is prevention. If we can prevent, if you can prevent waste as much as you can, if you can't do that, moving down along, you prepare for reuse. If you can't do that, you recycle. If you can't do that, you try to recover. And in some industries, they're able to recover energy from waste. And finally, as a last alternative disposal, so kind of ultimate disposal with no other use coming from that. We're going to refer to that later again and how you can apply that in, in your tourism business. So the four big ways that you apply it is you refuse waste coming into your business as much as possible. You reduce waste that is being generated within your business. 
what you're left with, you consider creatively how you can reuse and repurpose that. And the fourth one is you recycle. And it's interesting because our general kind of understanding is that recycling is the solution. And actually, in terms of strategies and how to apply the hierarchy, it's number four after the three that are before that. Reduce, reuse, reduce, refuse, reduce and reuse. All the ors. So we're going to, to speak through that now in detail uh, as we go through the steps. So I mentioned there at the beginning the 10 steps to waste management in your business. Um, and I'm going to go through these one by one. The first one is to appoint a green champion or green team. Now that green champion or green team, it sounds very formal. In larger organizations, it may well be called those names, green champion, green team. Um, in smaller organizations, or particularly where you might be the only person or one of only a few people in your business, it's really a, a question of allocating responsibility or taking responsibility for this, making it a priority making it part of somebody's role um, that they are responsible for driving the, the waste management um, agenda within the business. So a green champion suits a small business with a few amount of people and a green team is more appropriate for larger businesses, particularly with those with, um, with multiple departments. The important thing about the green team is this important piece of information. Only when you measure and monitor can you truly manage waste and save money. So this is my encouragement not to get straight into how you reduce waste, but to really start from the off by setting up a measurement and monitoring system. And I'm joined today by Anya Martin from Hotel Doolin, which is Ireland's first certified carbon neutral hotel. And she will talk through how they've gone through these steps um, in real life, in practice, in Hotel Doolin as well. Um, but one of the key things is to, to measure and monitor, and that becomes the responsibility of the green champion or the green team. And we have some spreadsheets that you can use to help you do that. This is the important piece of information. Your ability to report accurately and memorably on your successes in minimizing waste depends on how well you keep track of your key numbers. Make a note of your starting point before you take any action. There are a number of areas where you need to communicate how you're doing. Increasingly, I'm sure many of you are being approached by trade partners about what is your sustainability policy, what actions have you taken. If you've applied for awards or if you've applied for certification, you are also asked to provide evidence of that and provide numbers. If you want to include it in your marketing, people are not interested in just, oh, we're committed to waste management. They're interested in what you've actually done and what you're prepared to stand over. So for all those reasons I've mentioned there, make note of your baseline, where you started, and then track over time how the actions you're taking are helping to reduce waste, save money, and save emissions. So that really is the priority of the green team or the green champion. Once in place, once somebody or, or a group of people have that responsibility, the first task is to look at your annual use and costs. So let's talk through that. How much waste is generated in your business right now? Do you know that? How much waste in actual weight and in money is generated in your business right now? Once you establish that, you have your baseline. That's your starting point. So how will you find that out? What's the best way to do that? You establish, I would suggest at this point, we're still very early in 2023, that you establish your annual figures for 2022, that you get a full picture for a whole year of how much waste was generated in your business and how much that cost you. You will find that in, in, in the worksheets that accompany this webinar that you'll find on the Tourism NI website, we have three spreadsheets um, because you will have generally three types of waste in your business. You will have waste going to landfill. That's one spreadsheet. These are all identical, except they separate out the different types of waste. You'll have weight by recycling and you'll have food waste. So most waste collection uh, companies, and in fact all, will ask you to separate your waste into these categories and you will be billed separately for each of these. So for that reason, keeping track of your baseline, it's good to keep track of them separately. Not your overall waste, but your waste for landfill, waste for recycling, and your waste for food waste. Because obviously you, you're hoping that your waste to landfill will reduce, your recycling will increase, and your food waste, food waste will reduce as well. You'll find all the information you need for these spreadsheets on your waste bill. And we're going to spend time now talking through the waste bill. So common categories on a waste bill, it's quite hard to find waste bills um, online or on the, on the websites of any of the waste collection companies. I'm sure you've, you're all familiar with their own, but what I'm going to talk through here um, is, is generic to kind of cover all types of waste bills. But things you will find, there are common categories of waste. I've mentioned them already. Things like landfill, which can be described as mixed waste, landfill waste, general refuse, mixed refuse, and there's probably other terms as well. But basically waste that is not being recovered in any way and is going straight to landfill. You'll have food waste, sometimes called the brown bin, compost, compostable waste. Then you'll have recycling, mixed dry recycling, recycling blue bin. 
you'll have glass, cardboard and hazardous waste. They're the most common categories of waste that you'll find. Have a look at your bill and see what yours is being described at and make sure you're clear which one each term means for you. Getting into your bill then, you, you should cover one month of collections usually. And for each collection, there should be a description of the waste category. So as you see, there's no common terminology for them, but you'll find for each collection which type of waste they were collecting. And you need to establish the categories that apply to you on your bill so that you're clear on that. Moving on then, check the charges. Now this varies by waste collection provider and by the contract that you have. Some charge by lift, so you get a charge for collecting a bin on any given date, whether there's anything in the bill or not, irrespective of the waste. So to lift one bin, there might be a standing charge. The processing charge is the charge for processing each kg of waste collected. So that's actually dependent on your weight and the processing charge would increase and decrease according to the weight that is in your particular bins. So it's important to find out which way you're charged. Not everybody has this separation. So find out if you do, because obviously if you're being charged by lift, you want to make sure the bins that are being lifted are full um, and not that you have two or three bins that, that are each half full, but you're being charged by, um, by lift. And then the processing, the way to reduce your waste, your, your bill in that case is to reduce the amount of waste you're putting in in the first place. And we'll talk through that. This is hard to see, I know, but you'll be able to get these slides afterwards as well. That's an example of a waste bin from an accommodation provider. Um, that I would be familiar with near us here. And they're certainly charged by lift and by processing. So they've six bins um, being charged something like 1350 per bin to lift. So if they only lift four, it's gonna be less. If they lift nine, it's going to be more. And then they have a processing, um, a processing weight per kg for mixed waste and for dry recyclables. In this case, the fee for processing mixed waste is higher. It's more than double what it is for recycling. And again, when you start to see these differences in your bill, you can see it makes more sense the more you put into recycling from a cost perspective, as well as from an environmental perspective. So I'm not saying your bill is like that, but you need to look at your bill and understand exactly what's here. Here's a different bill. Um, this one isn't at all clear what you're doing. You really need to work this one out. But you have, for example, um, they have a dry recycling bin with a unit price. They have a refuse bin that was collected at three different times. There's a compost bin. So there's the three different types. It's not clear, we'll say the recycle bins there, there's a quantity of three, they're being charged by lift, whereas the refuse bin is being charged by weight. So they have one type of charge for one bin and another type for another type. Again, I realize this is confusing. The important thing is that you get clear on your own bill, that you understand how you're being charged and how the costs are being accumulated in your business and where you may have scope to, to reduce or change those. So this is the worksheet one, landfill by weight. It's the same sheet uh, for recycling and for food. They're just separated out in the worksheet you get. So what I'm suggesting is that for 2022, um, you look here, these two, these two boxes at the top and you fill in your landfill kg and your landfill cost. On these spreadsheets, the only thing you have to fill in is the green box. The rest have formulas hidden behind them that will, that will work out the detail in there for you. So if you go back over your bills for 2022, you will be able to tot up your total kg of landfill and the total cost. Now it can take a bit of time to do that because as you see on the bills, landfill is mixed up with recycling and is mixed up with food waste. So you may need to go back over them, you know, as an exercise once off and go through, pick out landfill from each bill and total them and pick out the cost and total it and do the same for recycling and do the same for food. But it's worth an exercise because then you have a baseline that you can work with. Fill it in there where those two arrows are on the green sheet. Um, and that's kind of the first job. You know what it cost you and how much waste in 2022, and you have your baseline. So the suggested actions from what I've said is study your bill and note the different categories of waste and the terminology that is used. If you don't understand any item category, ring up and find out to make sure that you do know. And if your bill does not show a breakdown of weight or costs, request a full breakdown from your provider they should be able to provide that for you. And really you want that on your bill going forward as well. So now that you have your baseline, the next thing to do is benchmark. Benchmarking allows you to track your own performance over time and allows you to compare your performance against others in the industry. And we did refer to this for water and waste or for anything that you're doing really in your business. An example would be five kg of waste is generated per guest or one kg per square meter in my building or a quarter of a kg per cover in my restaurant. So the benchmark is something that a constant that you compare it with 
covers make sense for a restaurant. Square meters might make sense for a building. Guests might make sense for a visitor attraction um, or something like that. So something that makes sense that is, is going to allow you compare like with like over time. So if your restaurant is particularly busy in 2023 because you've expanded the square footage, for example, um, you're going you're gonna to generate more waste in that business. But what you want to be able to compare is the waste per cover this year versus the waste per cover last year, because that's independent of the amount of, uh, amount of covers that you actually have. So I hope that makes sense, but it's important to get your benchmark. The spreadsheet will let you do that as well. So I'm assuming you filled in your, your last year's figures. And up here in the top right, you'll see the benchmark measure. If you fill in there, what you would fill in there is something like we do 5,000 covers in the year, or our building is 10,000 square meters, or we sell 10,000 tickets to our visitor attraction in a year, or we have 500 guests over the course of the summer. Whatever your constant is, you fill it in there, and then it will fill in this benchmark per kg and benchmark cost. You'll be able to track that over time as well. I think that's an important one to do because it's the only thing that allows you to compare like with like, even when your years are different in terms of business um, and any changes to your business. The next step is to monitor monthly and we're back at the sheet again. So this sheet really helps you contain all your data. If you look in there where the red box is, this sheet will allow you to fill in month by month over 2023, how much waste is generated and what the cost of that waste is. By this stage, you should be familiar with your bill. And really, it's a case of when the bill comes in once a month, take five minutes to fill in. It won't even take five minutes. Take five minutes to fill in this spreadsheet. Fill in January, fill in February. And as you go through the year, you're going to get a, a, a really good breakdown month by month of what's happening. You'll start to see patterns develop. And you'll also see how your benchmark is changing month on month or year on year as well. So you have everything in one spreadsheet. And you can keep using that then year on year for comparison purposes. So make that a priority of your, of your team. So at this stage, if you've done those four steps, you've a really good handle on how much waste is generated and how much it's costing. And obviously you want to reduce the amount of waste and the amount of money it's costing you. So here are the next few steps or steps you can take to do that. We're still in audit mode. We're still trying to understand where waste is generated in your business and how. The first step we suggest is that you inspect your bins. So plan to do this. Here's a step-by-step -step approach. Plan to do this for set aside a week where you're going to inspect all bins. I know it's not a relishing thought, but, um, but it's something that has to be done. For that week, check every bin in the business twice per day. Make this somebody's job for a week that they're going to log this. Pay close attention to what's in the bin. List the two items that appear most often over the week or at different points in the day. Okay, so you're really trying to understand what's our biggest problem here from a waste perspective. After a week, you'll have solid information on which items are your top waste challenges. And this is a kind of an audit table. It's in your worksheet. There's nothing fancy about this at all. There's no formulas. It's just a table that says if somebody's going around your business for a week looking at all the bins, that they are literally making a note. This is what was in the bin today and what's the potential solution. Um, the solution may not be immediately obvious, but at least note that. Um, I know a five-star hotel that did this and they, they noticed, for example, in their bedrooms that the most disposed of item were the complimentary slippers that they were giving to people. Um, and that's like straight, oh my God, we're buying these in and now we're, we're disposing so many of them. And that led to the brainstorming about what we can do about that. In their instance particular, they certainly had a, a presumption that what well, we can't do without those were a five-star hotel. But what they did do was that they placed the slippers high up on a shelf, you know, where you normally get your spare blankets. They let people know they were there and that meant people who only those who really wanted them used them and it reduced the amount of the amount of slippers that were used by something like 70 percent so when they were placed on the bed everyone used them but when people had to you know think about whether they needed them or not they simply didn't use them and it massively reduced the waste they wouldn't have done that if they hadn't gone around and done a bin audit so that's what i'm saying go and see what's showing up the most in your bin the next thing, do a walk around waste audit. And this is where you literally walk around your business with nothing on your mind but waste. And this is a nice table as well. Again, nothing fancy, no formulas, just a table that you can use for that, where you, you focus on this for one walk around your business. Again, you might do it for a week or you might do it for a day or you might do it once, one day a month. Um, just walk around and say, where are we generating waste in the business? Um, this, is, this is the key question. Where are we seeing it? What is it that people are doing that is causing waste to appear in our bin. So an example there is we're using single serve butter and jam portions. A solution could be that we switch, switch to dished butter and jam. 
you may decide we're going to stick with that, but at least you have you have a log of where the waste is coming. And all we're doing at this stage is trying to gather as much information as we can so that we're able to create the best action plan possible. So I suggest a walk around waste audit. It doesn't cost any money. It costs a bit of time and just attention. So there are the two things, your bin audit and walk around the business audit. And then you have the monitor the waste collection area in your business. This one is more about costs, I suppose, than waste. But an important thing to do is note in your diary the day your bins are collected. And each week, inspect the bin collection area and the bins themselves on that morning, on the day that they're being collected. And what it will show up is if you have too, too many bins, each of which are only half full or part full, um, you'll also find out if the recyclable material is in the landfill bin or vice versa, um, in which case you're, you, you realize you know, somebody along the line needs to have um, training or awareness raising on that particular issue. Well, you're going to see what's actually going out to your waste collection provider. Um, and are the bins full to the top? Because if they're not, you're probably paying extra for them as well. And have you more than one bin that is half full? So at this stage, you're going to have checked your bins, checked where waste is providing, and all the while you're building out your picture of, of waste in the business. If you're a business that provides food, then this is a really important area to look at. Now, I'm conscious with food, um, this is an important statistic. Food waste contributes one sixth of all global emissions all the way along its chain from production through to ending up in the bin. It's a huge priority for, um, for climate action globally at this stage. And, and every business has a, has a real obligation to look at this particular one. It's also costly to have your food waste collected. Um, so I'm conscious that you have a food waste webinar coming up in mid-March that's specifically on this area. So I'm not going to go into detail here. Anybody who has food uh, preparation or service in their business, I would encourage you to go to the webinar that's on um, next month on this as well. So for now, if you're doing your audit around, I would suggest a food waste survey and you'll probably get more detail on this in, in the webinar, but there's four types of waste coming from food. There's the waste created when you prepare, there's the waste that comes back on the plate, there's unserved cooked food, so food that's cooked that never made it onto a plate, and then there's unprepared spoiled food, so food that went off before it was cooked or served to anybody. So there's several places to have a look, and it's, I suppose, at its simplest, do a survey, spend a day looking at what waste is coming back on the plate at breakfast, at lunch, at dinner, or do the same thing with a bin waste. What is in the food bin? Um, and certainly I hear reports of people who find that really transformative, uh, the food bin side of things where um, simple things, and I'm sure Anya probably has some of them, where drawing awareness of people in the kitchen to the food bin, moving from a closed bin to an open bin, moving from a large bin to a small bin, um, how things like that can actually have a big impact on the amount of food waste that's generated. Um, and food spoilage patterns, obviously a stock rotation system that avoids spoilage uh, would be important as well. So at this stage, and I know I'm going fast, hopefully you'll get a chance to, to move over this again. You have your weight and costs of waste. You've also looked now within your own business and you've found out what's the biggest waste, waste, waste challenges that you have. Where is waste being generated in your business and where is food waste possibly being generated in your business? So you have a really clear picture now. And that's as much as you can do in terms of understanding waste in your business at this point. Now it's time to analyze and prioritize. Um, and probably you're going to see some things really jumping out, like the slippers jumped out in that five-star hotel um, really quickly. I know another five-star hotel and they just, in their walk around audit, noticed that they were putting branded um, extras on almost everything they serve to business. So like a cup would come with a little, a little mat under the cup that was branded. Every glass had a little neck around, a little you know, paper neck around with the branding on it. They were giving two serviettes as a matter of course, and it just jumped out. Like, oh my gosh, we don't need all that. And if we do, it doesn't need to be branded. We could have recyclable material. And that led to a big change for them. Um, so find out what your priority are, share outcomes with your team or your mentor, brainstorm solutions, and broadly estimate the costs and resources required. So some things will cost money and time, um, and others will be quite easy to implement. And then prioritize. And it really is first take the actions with the lowest cost and the highest impact. We find on, on sessions like these that people come and they want to know a lot about a big investment item like a, a biodigester for their food or something like that, you know, that's really big. When really take the low hanging fruit first, make the impact with the things that are the lowest cost and the highest impact, and then move your way along to higher, higher ticket items that have also um, a big impact. 
And that gets you towards taking action. And at this point, I'm sure I'm sure you've had enough of my voice, but at this point, I would like to in, invite Anya Martin to join the webinar and explain her experiences and that of her team from Ireland's first certified carbon neutral hotel. Um, and everything they did, they did without the benefit of this webinar, I'm sure. But it's it's interesting to see the thought processes and what people did. So I'll hand over to Anya. You're, you're just on mute, Anya, so we are. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, th thanks, thanks very much, Tina. And uh, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to present again this morning. And my presentation is Waste Management and Our Experiences from Hotel Doolan, Ireland's first certified carbon neutral hotel. You might just need to click on the centre again. Okay. Just like, um, yourself. That's us. Thank you. Uh, so in our case, what we did was we set up the green team that Tina mentioned and the incentives for your business would be to reduce carbon footprint, to improve your involvement within the community, uh, increase corporate social responsibility activities and purchase locally. So in our case, it was setting up a water team, a waste team and an energy team, and then somebody who was focusing on um, local purchasing and corporate social responsibility. So the three R's are to reduce, reuse and recycle. Um, so this is really key for waste. So reducing waste uh, at source. So Tina gave some wonderful examples there, like not over ordering uh, in terms of food. So re you're reducing the amount of waste that's going into the bin. Um, reusing materials, um, things like in our case, what we would have done was um, um, sorry now, um, in terms of reusing materials, yeah, we would have had reclaimed brick used in our barn, um, which is the purpose built wedding venue. But I'll go through some more examples of that and obviously recycling. So, what are the types of waste landfill? food waste, recycling and compost. So what are the suggestions for reducing waste? Well, my suggestions would be, we had started off with a 20 foot polytunnel about eight years ago, and we upgraded it in recent years to a 50 foot polytunnel, um, asking the chefs what they wanted to have grown for their menus, and then the gardeners would go about growing those. It saves about six thousand euro per year, and in terms of generating um, a six thousand euro profit, we would have had to do about four times that in sales. And I can certainly say that there is a lot of work in generating twenty four thousand euro of um, of sales. So it's a really quick win. Um, it reduces the amount of food bias. We know what we are growing and eating. It's fun for the staff to get involved in and less packaging is required. And also to write that on the menu that the ingredients are from the polytunnel is a really good thing as well because the guests love it. In fact, we would have had um, a map on the food menu that would have shown a picture of the polytunnel. Um, so that's one recommendation. We also changed the style of lunch service. So around COVID uh, time, just before just before that, we were seeing that there was a huge number of buses coming to our area to visit the Cliffs of Moher and to visit Doolan to take the ferries out to the Aran Islands. And uh, the area was, and sometimes, you know, can be saturated with buses. And we were serving about a thousand people per day, sometimes with the Carvery. So we decided to change the style of service from Carvery to an a la carte lunch menu. And we reduced the food waste from 0.25 kilograms per person in 2020. And now the um, total waste uh, is, the total food waste per person is 0.15 kilograms, which shows 40% decrease in food waste. And it's not just, you know, the cost that's uh, of, of the waste being disposed of, but it's also the cost, we all know that the cost of food has gone through the roof. So um, that's really positive thing. And obviously the effect that it's having on greenhouse gases as well. Um, and ecotourism, the ethos is fundamental to everything that is done at Hotel Doolan. 
Hotel Doolan uses compostable takeaway containers and keep cups. Uh, you see it in some businesses. We would reward people for bringing their own keep up, kept giving them a 30 cent discount. And the napkins and cups and um, any takeaway containers would be compostable. But we would also try to encourage, um, you know, not to have to just give away um, these items. So, for example, when we run festivals, we would actually not use takeaway containers at all. The kitchen is right beside the venue where the festivals take place that the hotel organises. So we'd actually just give the normal plates um, that can be washed in the kitchen and it kept the whole venue much cleaner as well. Um, so that is a positive thing that the hotel did. We have a complete ban on the sale of plastic. So no plastic bottles of water or soft drinks are sold in any outlet of the hotel. Refillable water bottles are sold. And just to add on to what Tina said there, um, you know, the hotel would have previously given out plastic bottles of water as a gesture in the bedrooms. And what we started doing was putting in reusable uh, litre water bottles. And that saved a huge amount of waste, cost, um, so that was a, a really positive step for the hotel as well. In the bedrooms, the tissue that's used is a Lucart, is Lucart from Lucart, which is 100% ecological paper and is FSC registered. It's actually made from oh, um, recycled beverage cartons, so like milk cartons. And we tell the story in the bedrooms about that so that people know um, what they're what, what what we're doing and what steps we're taking. Uh, the bedroom toiletries are organic from Voya, made in County Sligo. No small single use packaging for any of the toiletries. They're bought in bulk containers and then filled into the smaller bottles in the bedroom. And there's also a cardboard baler on site. So reusing materials. I mentioned earlier about the Eco Barn, which is the wedding and events venue. The barn hosts about 130 weddings per year and it's um, got reclaimed brick walls. The bar counter in the picture there, um, straight under the text, the bar counter is made from old whiskey barrels. The lampshades in that picture are made from fishermen's eel baskets. And that, the picture on the right is an example of the table plan that's made from old records. Um, and when guests were coming in for show arounds for weddings, they love to hear that story. Um, so it is. It has been very beneficial for Hotel Doolan for the sales, for wedding sales. Uh, for the festivals, the hotel hosts three festivals per year, bringing about 4,000 extra people to Doolan uh, each year. Previously, we would have printed out the festival programmes and given them to people when they arrive with their, their ticket. Um, so what we decided to do was stop printing the programmes and uh, actually paint the programs onto different walls and on signs around the hotel, which is creating employment. Um, and it stopped the printing costs, it stopped the disposal costs, um, and people were very happy to, you know, take a picture of the program as well and have it on their phone. Um, so that saves that saves about 10,000 programs uh, over the last six years. So it's just kind of thinking outside the box on different things. Um, training staff at induction and regular training sessions is really important. So from day one, I mentioned that at the last uh, seminar that, you know, putting the policies and the initiatives into your new employees heads from day one is essential. And uh, the manager on duty would also be responsible for checking that waste segregation is happening and do spot checks. So in terms of training, scheduled training and retraining of chefs and kitchen staff on portion size was critical. Um, so we did things like we changed the plate size from a big plate to a smaller plate so that the plates looked fuller. Um, this resulted in savings on labour, waste disposal and improves sustainability and increases the gross profit. Um, food is stored and covered so that there's longer shelf life. Strict ordering practices are in place to reduce overordering and putting things like, for example, specials on to use up food that is close to its sell by date 
looking at things like, you know, is there a lot of bread that's coming back after breakfast? Um, can bread be, you know, used for bread and butter pudding? I'm not saying to, for it to come back from the, the restaurant, but, you know, when the when the bread is coming to, it's close to its expiry date, instead of it going in the bin, can bread and butter pudding be made? So just another example. The newest initiative at Hotel Doolan is wine on tap. So instead of ordering in glass bottles for the Stonewall Cafe and Pizzeria, we started ordering wine in casks and it reduces the amount of wastage that's created by wine going off and also less packaging. And it has increased wine sales significantly. The wine is poured into crafts. It's funky looking and um, it's it's been very, very beneficial for wine sales. The plans for Hotel Doolin are to purchase a biodigester. So what is a biodigester? It's a standalone system that transforms food waste, food scraps into cooking gas for your kitchen while also creating a fertilizer for gardening. The payback is about four years. But what I would say is really important is that the food is measured before it goes into a biodigester because there's no point in the biodigester just being loaded with you know whatever amount of food because that's going to be very costly. So to measure it from the start is important. So to establish a baseline, um, that's kind of the theoretical side of reading your waste bill. So in my case, what I would have done was highlighted the different types of waste on the bill with three different highlighters. I know it sounds very basic, but it makes the waste kilograms and the cost stand out um, so that it's easier then to total up your kilograms and your cost. Um, so things like, um, I've just made some additional notes from Tina's presentation, but um, in the first year, be ambitious, set a target. If this is the first time that you're going about food waste, set a target of 20% um, reducing your waste by. Look at the portion sizes, see if there's any free training that can be used to train your chefs. There's a really good video from Monaghan County Council on uh, food waste in particular. Other things that the hotel would have done were like, um reducing things going to landfill we would have there's a local facebook page called clear free to a good home and when we were changing all of the beds in the hotel there were still a few the beds were still in good condition but they weren't what we wanted them to be so instead of just having them brought to the the local um dump we put them on clear free to a good home and there was probably another three or four years left in the beds so that reduced the cost for the business and also we would have burned the candles down halfway for the candles in the table in the bar. Um, so there was a local woman who actually makes candles. So she took those, um, the, the candle butts, I call them, and um, was using those to make her own candles. Yeah, it's really important to walk around your departments um, and inspecting the bins. I remember one time I went out and saw, you know, loads of chicken fillets in the bin and going back in and asking the chefs, then why are they in the bin? So you're kind of putting responsibility on them to take ownership. Set a target, I've mentioned that already. Um, what can be done to reduce your waste to landfill? Um, so an example there is, you know, looking at the beds and putting them on the local Facebook page. Are there improved recycling practices that can be done? Um, you know, waste put, put in colour coded bins would have been essential for us um, around the different departments. And can you reduce waste at source by re reducing the ordering? Um, it's better to sell out of food um, and, you know, instead of the food going in the bin, I, I think that's a good way of kind of thinking. Um, and how can we reduce food waste? I've given some really clear examples. My recommended steps would be to start if you haven't already. The first step is to start recording and monitoring your waste. Um, also, get suppliers to take away their packaging and um, keep their packaging in an area that they can, when they're coming with a new delivery, to take it away. Talk to them about, you know, their practices. Like, are there is there loads of single-use plastic that's coming in that you have to dispose of and that's costing them? An example for us would have been the laundry that was sent off site. Um, coming back in in plastic. So we asked the laundry suppliers to stop sending in the plastic um, um, and, you know, coming up with a way that would keep the, the linen clean. Uh, coffee grains, we were we compost the coffee grains so that they're used then in the polytunnel. And um, also we filled the packet, the packets that the coffee green, that the coffee beans came in with uh, the the compost from the coffee grains so the guests could take that away with them as well. 
Um, and remember to always file your invoices in separate in a separate folder together. So like waste, water and energy, so that you can put your hands on that waste bill really easily um, to be able to calculate your waste each month. And that's it. If you have any questions, I'd be delighted to answer them at the end. And thank you very much again. And I'll hand you back over to Tina. Thanks, Anya. Um, thanks. That was great. I, I really I've heard Anya's story a few times and um, I just find it really kind of inspiring in a very practical way. It's an example of how, you know, a group can just knock their heads together and find creative solutions to things that, um, you know, everyday things that actually make a big difference in terms of of waste and costs. Um, yes, if you have any questions, to, do drop them in the chat because we will have some time at the end for that. So I'm following up on Anya there. She's probably given you the full, you know, rundown of, of an approach, but here's, I guess, the theory of it as well. The action plan, creating your action plan, and you will have an action plan template in your, in your, um, in your workbook as well. It's only an action plan if it is clear who has to take the action and when that action has to be taken by. So rather than write down a list of things we should do or might do or could do, actually put it into a plan where it says, well, Tina has to do that by the end of February. Um, and that's that's where it moves into being an actual action plan. So this is the template that is available to you from download. And it just says exactly listing action by action, who's responsible for it, when it should be completed by, and any notes that might be useful for that. And this allows you to list things that are low hanging fruit that you can see immediately that you can do. And then things that might be two, three, even longer down the line that would require a significant investment. But at least it allows you to capture it and start to plan around it. So I would encourage you to kind of formalize your actions into a plan like that. It also means you have a document that everyone on your team can look at and refer to um, and kind of also get that satisfaction of ticking off actions and knowing what they're doing. It also means if you tick off actions and you start, you really get into analyzing your bills, you will see the impact of your actions. And that can be very motivating for, for yourself and your team as well. So here are some of, really, it's just wrapping up that theory um, of what Anya was speaking about there. Back to the hierarchy, we said there were four things, and I think Anya referred to three, making it even simpler, which is, you know, refuse, reduce, recycle, um, and reuse. So this is practical application of the hierarchy. Four main action areas, refuse and reduce waste coming into your business. Anya mentioned about speaking to your suppliers. Um, opening that conversation about how you can reduce waste coming in at all um, is probably the biggest win you can make. Then reducing the waste arising from your operations, repurposing and reusing, great examples there of like the candles and the beds um, and recycling, including composting. So let's look at them one by one. Reduce single use items and reduce paper use and printing. Examine external printing, for example, for marketing. And again, Anya had a wonderful example there where they stopped printing the festival programs. I'm sure something you would have thought is absolutely essential, but they found a creative way to eliminate that printing, as well as, you know, the delivery costs to transport them to you and the storage costs of printing materials as well. Focus on food and provide training for your staff. So if you have a green team or even a mentor or another business owner, you can bounce ideas off. You will see those areas when you start to audit things. You go, oh, there's plastic on our linen coming back from the laundry and questioning that, re you know, refusing that. And it's almost even a mental refusal, committing to saying, OK, we're going to find a solution to that. Um, that's going that's going to stop coming in. Um, I know in the case of Hotel Doolin, where Anya mentioned they no longer serve plastic bottles in any of their retail outlets. But there was a time when they when they did. And really, it was down to a decision at a green Green team meeting that said okay we're going to stop that now they weren't able to stop it immediately but it's it put the action in the action plan and made it happen over a period of time as well reduce waste arising in your own operation so for each item of waste that is in your bin ask these two questions how essential is this item to delivering our product or service like the five-star hotel do they really need all those napkins accompanying everything they serve to their visitors so how essential is it does it make a material difference to our visitor experience and the experience of our service and number two are there alternatives that we haven't thought of before and i would encourage you to really question yourself just because you've always done it doesn't mean you always have to do it there are new products and new ideas coming on stream all the time. People who are active in this area of, you know, climate action and reducing emissions are really willing to share their ideas and to spread them widely. So, you know, question all the time and introduce that culture of questioning. Do we really need it? 
um, and are there alternatives we haven't thought of? Number three, reuse and repurpose. So you can donate items, we've heard about that. You can upcycle items, you know, if it becomes a policy to do that. In some places, make it actually part of, of their USP to do that, like the Shed Distillery in Drumshanbo and Leitrim I'm familiar with. Um, part of their visitor experience is that everything in there is upcycled and has a story behind it. Repair and refurbish as much as possible. Um, and one that's really gaining traction at the moment globally, or well, I'd say globally, in a lot of countries is too good to go which is a food waste um, option where I, I, I think I have a, yeah, a, a link at it here, 18,000 businesses in the fight against food waste. It's for those who have food left over. It's a way to maybe uh, redistribute that to, to people who will buy it from you at a reduced price. It saves the, the waste and it also gives others a bargain. It's a bit of a win-win situation. I would encourage you to, to look at that. It's a very user-friendly app. Um, it's available in, in Northern Ireland and throughout the United Kingdom. Um, number four is recycle. Providing segregated bins that are easy to access, I mean, that's essential. And then displaying easy to understand labels on those bins. So not everyone will get the color, not everyone sees colors the same. It's really a good idea to put diagrams rather than words. We don't all speak the same language and we understand words differently. Diagrams that make it really clear what goes into each bin uh, can be really handy. And training staff on waste segregation guidelines, not to assume that people know how to segregate waste, Simple training can just raise awareness on that and make sure people know that they're doing the right thing. And compost food wherever possible. And there is a resource there, Northern Ireland Recycle Now, um, that would help you with setting up a recycling system as well. Part of recycling is composting. You could separate it out as well for businesses that handle a large amount of food waste. And there is a, a good environmental guidance for your business in Northern Ireland and Scotland that deals specifically with treating and composting biodegradable waste. So if food is a, is a factor for you, this really is one to, to consider. And the last thing, and it could be mentioned in every one of those four strategies, and it's across everything, is influencing the behaviour, the behaviour of your staff and the behaviour of your guests. Raising awareness through communication, training and monitoring. Ensuring you make it as easy as possible for people to do the right thing. Um, we do hear back repeatedly businesses who have taken all these actions, put up all the signs, made all the, sin, the bins available, and still visitors don't really respond or staff don't. And so I would say this particular one of communication is an ongoing thing to keep in mind. It takes a long time to change behavior, um, but it will, it will make an impact over time. And like that, making it as easy as possible to make the decision that you want them to make. So again, I'd remind you that's a whistle stop tour through the whole lot. I think with, with waste really in particular, and I said the same about water, there is a set amount of actions that you can take that you can work through methodically. Um, and if you follow the system that we've outlined there and Anya has explained how it worked in practice with them of just introducing those questions, questioning yourself on the waste that is being generated in your business and challenging yourselves to find um, solutions to that really will be a rewarding exercise. And you can kind of, you know, do all, all that's possible in a way that really isn't going to cost a lot of money. It will cost time and attention, but maybe not a lot of money. And it will save you, um, it will certainly save uh, your bills, your waste collection bills, and also uh, save on the contribution that your business might be making to carbon emissions. So I'd encourage you to download the workshop resources on tourismni.com forward slash leaner greener. You'll get the workbook that I spoke, the guidebook there that talks through much of what we have here and also those worksheets and templates that will help you on your journey as well. I'd like to remind you of the next webinar that's coming up. It is on the topic of food waste. Um, it's on the 14th of March from two to three, another hour long webinar. Um, so save the date and I'm sure you'll hear more about that from Tourism and I uh, in the time running up to that as well. So that's a conclusion from myself and from Anya. Thank you very much for listening. If there are any questions and comments, we'd love to take them now. Thanks very much. Thank, thank you so much, Tina. Thanks to Anya also. Um, and uh, yeah, lots to think about once again. Um, I don't know what it says about me. The thing that stood out to me is the idea of wine on tap. <laughs> Anya, that, that sounds fabulous. <laughs> um, so as Tina mentioned, um, you can access uh, the bespoke guidebook and useful templates that were referred to in the presentation, um, along with um, all the materials from uh, last month's water conservation session, all at tourismni.com forward slash leaner greener so all the information from today is up there um, and we will also be sharing a recording of today's session with anybody who registered for today so you can review that again at your leisure and um, if there's anything that you heard today but you didn't get to note it down 
you'll be able to access a PDF of all the slides as well as the recording from today. Um, so uh, if anybody does have any questions, I can share those with Tina and Anya uh, shortly. Um, uh, just enter them into the little questions box or the chat box in your control panel, um, and I, I can pick those up in a little bit. But just before we get stuck into any questions at all, um, I just want to do a couple of very quick polls just to get a feel for um, how everyone's found today's session so far. So um, it should pop up on your screen shortly. The first question, which is, how would you rate today's webinar in terms of content and relevance to your business on a scale of one to five? So that's with one being not relevant at all, and five being uh, very relevant. Um, exactly what you were logging on for today. Just give you a second uh, to click your option there. Okay. And our second question is just a very simple yes or no question. So it's just simply, do you plan to take any action within your business um, as a result of what you've heard from our speakers today? So yes or no. Okay. Thank you so much. And as always, we'll be issuing a short survey via email um, and immediately after this session. Um, it's just a little link to click through and just a few questions and it's your opportunity to let us know how you find today's session, but also there'll be there's some free text boxes there where you can let us know what else you'd like to hear from within our ongoing TED program. So anything else on the topic of leaner and greener or even beyond that as well. So um, uh, we'll just, um, uh, yeah, really, really appreciate it if you can take a few minutes to fill that in. Okay, so thank you again, uh, Tina and Anya. Um, oh, I see there's a, a question has popped in there um, for, for yourself, Anya. Um, did you find um, an increase in wage costs um, when you moved from an a la carte uh, to an a la carte service um, for coach tours? Um, is that something yeah. you can? The, the answer to that question is no, um, because there's less food covers done um, but there's far less food waste, um, so that there was there's a saving in the food waste. Um, but no, there wasn't an increase in the wage cost. We looked at things like making systems more efficient. So previously, the staff would have um, not had to take orders um, for the carvery because you go up and the chef would give out the food. Um, but we looked at systems then where you know, people could use handheld devices to be able to put the order straight into the kitchen so that the staff weren't going into the kitchen to place the order, if that makes sense. Um, that was just a, a an additional hardware, a piece of hardware, um, but didn't have a an extra wage cost. But no, not an extra increase in wage costs. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, thank you so much. Um, and uh, I suppose, Tina, uh, is, is there any? What would be the? What would be kind of the the one? If I, if someone takes just one thing away from today, what, what's the most important thing to remember? Uh, not just wine on tap. <laughs> not just wine on tap. But don't forget the wine on tap. But uh, I would say to to measure and monitor, to commit to measuring and monitoring uh, from the start and then month by month. Uh, you'll be amazed what you what transparency you get just by getting in behind your figures. Okay. Right, great. So much information. I think everyone's um, so busy digesting it, or maybe maybe all their questions have been answered within within the, the actual slides. So, so not too not too many grilling questions today, but um, but lovely numbers there. So thank you so much to everyone that's joined us this morning, um, and also anyone who might be watching us on record. Oh, sorry, another question's just snuck in there. So, um, uh, what would you recommend for food waste um, on a, a caravan park or a caravan owner? So slightly different setup to a hotel. Um, now I know we are going to be having a, a whole session on food waste, as Tina mentioned, um, in, in March. Um, so we're going to be, be going into a lot more detail on food waste, but I don't know if you have any thoughts on, on that, Tina, at all. I think the question is interesting because I know from speaking to Carbon Park owners, this is a huge challenge and also for self-catering where visitors don't cooperate with uh, what you might be trying for them to do. Um, and I think you know, it's it's a big area. It's back to the continuous awareness signage, making it as easy as possible. And I know whoever asked that question is probably doing all that and still being frustrated by it. So um, it's a big area and it's one where if you can connect in with others who are doing stuff and find out what works, that there's good transference there. And I imagine, yeah, in the food waste webinar that you do, it won't be us that are back for that. It's a food waste expert. Um, I think you'll probably find some some good tips on that as well. But I do know there's a, there's a lot of frustration um, in that area and also in self-catering as well uh, for exactly that issue. 
Yeah, I know that, you know, you can you can do as much signage and as much from your end as possible, but you're depending on the people that are there using the resources actually following the, the guidance and things like that. You, yeah. you can't control yeah. everything, unfortunately. We just have yeah. to all try and do our bit. Thank you so much for that question, though. And I would encourage you to, to sign up for our, our March session then as well. Um, uh, so, yes, uh, that leads me on to my next point. Um, and as I know Tina mentioned there, we are going to be having a food waste session. It's on the 14th, Tuesday, the 14th of March at 2 p.m. So if anyone hasn't already signed up for that, you can head again to tourismandi.com forward slash TNI events. Um, and you'll find that alongside um, any um, other upcoming webinars we have. Um, we actually have a session later this week um, on Tourism Ireland industry opportunities this Thursday. Um, we have a couple of sessions coming up looking at the Disability Discrimination Act, um, uh, one happening later this month and one in March uh, for that. So um, be sure to go and check out tourismandi.com forward slash TNI events um, as well. But if you head to just our main page, tourismandi.com, you can navigate to um, any of those pages from there. Um, so, yep, we're going to be, as I said, getting a recording from today up online as soon as we possibly can. And um, anyone that's online here today will share that link with you directly. So you, you'll look up to that in your inboxes. So really all that remains, I'm just checking in case any other questions have snuck in, but I think we're OK. Um, thank you so much, Tina. Thank you, Anya. It's been lovely at uh, this session and the previous session um, working with you both. So thanks so much. And um, hopefully we'll see you again very soon. Uh, thanks also to Barry um, and Jordan working away in the background and keeping all the technical things flowing uh, for us. So thanks, everybody. Um, thanks to everyone who's joined us this morning. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.